Thanks I'm going to begin me. by asking you the same question I've asked you before, because it hasn't gone away, but I'm going to ask it in a far more provocative way. What's it like to run a $15.5 billion tracking stock? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think of it as a tracking stock. We just had uh, the, the, the leadership of all the IC businesses all together in, in uh, Los Angeles for the last couple of days, and it feels much more like a company and an operating business than it feels like a tracking stock. I'm but, joking, as you know, yes. but we'll put up a chart to help illustrate the point and come back to this question. I wouldn't say a question that dogs your company, but a question that is an important one for your shareholders, which is this valuation gap. If you look at the performance of Angie Home Services and you look at the performance of Match and you look at the performance of IAC, you're in line. But everything else is basically trading at zero. Well, less than zero, actually. I think it's, I, I haven't looked in the last few days, but it might be a negative two or three or four billion dollars. It does, it is an, an odd thing. It is something that happens with multi-business businesses, which is true of IAC. Um, but I think it's something that, that will work itself out over time. There's a number of ways to work that out. I think the best way to work it out is to deliver consistent results, deliver consistent uh, themes, um, but there's also ways you can move around structures to, to also help take advantage of those situations. In, uh, well, let's talk about that. I was about to say that it's kind of a high class problem to have, but what kinds of moves around structures might you make to help this, some of the parts discount go away? We're not looking at, at um, we look at moves like that all the time, but we're not actively looking at any of those moves right now. Um, but you, we have historically created a number of independent public companies, and that's something that, that we consider regularly, new companies, uh, things like that. Do you think you're closer to that decision now than you've been in the past? And, and what you're referring to, of course, is a spinoff of Match and or... Angie Home Services. No, I don't think we're closer to that than we have been in the past. And I'm not even necessarily referring to those. Those are options in a uh, basket of things we can consider, but there are other options too. The reasons to own IAC are manifold, but they include at the very least, as opposed to say Match or Angie, you get Dot Dash, you get Vimeo, you get your other businesses and a pile of cash effectively for nothing. Uh, but also because of your ability and IAC's track record with Barry Diller before you um, as, a, as a capital allocator. So, yeah. you know, the idea that you're going to do something clever with all that cash, which is approaching $2 billion. Look, I think that's right. And, and first of all, Barry's uh, st still around, very much still around. But we are, uh, we, we think of that as very much our job. Um, and we have outperformed the market. We look at this, well, since Barry took control of the company, which is 23 years ago, outperformed the market in any index by a pretty wide margin. But we also look at that on any period to say it wasn't just the early years. Over the last one year, three years, five years, 10 years, we look at that and, and we view our ability to allocate capital as something that's a key uh, feature of investing with IAC. The big deals that you've done over the past few years have been consolidation plays. Augmenting Match, for example, augmenting what was Home Advisor and turning it into Angie Home Services. You haven't entered what some people might call a new space yet, or at least in a substantial way. How come? Uh, we always think that, that businesses that we're already in are a we can be smarter with the capital in businesses that we're already in. So when we're looking at a dating business, for example, I think we can be the smartest people looking at that business. Not because we have the highest IQ, but because we know dating businesses inside and out, and we've looked at everyone in every geography over time. And the same is true in, in home services now. And so that's always going to take a priority on capital. But what happens is when we're looking at those things, new opportunities can emerge from there. In fact, Angie Home Services emerged from what was Service Magic, which came from something else, which was City Search, which was a bet on local, and this thing emerged from there. Joe, you noted on a recent conference call that there's plenty of capacity on IAC's balance sheet. If you were to include potential debt issuance and you were to dream, how much firepower could you bring to bear in a deal? How many billions of dollars? We ask ourselves that question a lot, and it is multi-billions. Multi-billions, I think, is something that is digestible by IAC, yeah. Multi is in two or multi is in five? I'd say closer to the latter. Okay. So how close have you come 
in, the t in all the times that we've talked, so we're going back several years already, to doing a deal of that size? Um, really, actually, only once. Um, this is, was a few years ago. Uh, but, and, and that was relatively close, but not all the way there. And, and it's something that we will consider regularly, but it's a very, very, very high bar. It has to be a very high conviction uh, bet. Everything that you're in touches the internet in one way, shape, or form. Are there any lessons for you or for IAC in what the internet giants have been facing lately? The backlash from users, the scrutiny, the challenges posed by government? And I'm thinking, of course, of Facebook and Google principally, but we could throw Amazon and Apple into that basket as well. I think that what we're seeing is consumers understanding in a way that they didn't previously and the world understanding in a way that they didn't previously the price to value exchange that's happened with data. And that sometimes is a very valid exchange. If you're talking about Uber, I want to share my location because I don't want to have to punch in my location every time I get a car. But if more data is being exchanged for less value, that's when people start to question that, and that's when things get uncomfortable. A lot of our businesses are subscription businesses, which is a very clear value exchange. You pay X, you get Y. That's very well understood. We've talked in the past about the huge tax, your words, that Apple and Google extract from everybody, but from your businesses as well, right? Sure. In, in Apple's case, it's you know 30% if you're going through sure. an app. Do you see a viable antitrust case against either, the people are talking about this, which is why I ask you, you know, against Apple or against Google or against Facebook or against Amazon? Do you it, think they're getting too big and too powerful? It does seem odd that price that they are charging and the price that they are both charging consistently and the amount of that price relative to other payment alternatives. You look at credit card processing is in the one, two, three percent range and we're talking about this at the 30 percent range and the two of them have a significant portion of the market. What you're effectively saying is monopoly power. I don't, I'll leave that to, to, to uh, judges or whoever make, makes those decisions but I do think it is a big tax on, on internet companies, yeah.